Hey everyone, welcome back to Heretics and Heroes. Today we're going to be talking about tanks and other vehicles. More specifically, this is the third video in my color scheme series. So we're going to talk about how you can paint your vehicles to match the rest of your army. The good news is that if you've already done the work of putting together a color scheme for the infantry in your army, I think vehicles are one of the easiest things to decide on a color scheme for. The reason for that is that they are compositionally simple objects. They're a hull, some kind of wheels or tracks, and then all the other little small details. So when we're talking about a color scheme for your vehicles, what we're really asking is what color are you painting the hull? And this can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. It is a 100% valid choice to just paint your whole tank or transport or whatever, just one color. In fact, a monotone scheme is overwhelmingly the most common way to paint vehicles for Warhammer. I believe that you can classify vehicle color schemes in three broad categories. That would be single color schemes, decorative color schemes, and camo color schemes. Let's talk about the single color paint schemes first. This is the go-to vehicle color scheme for the poster boys of Warhammer 40,000, the Space Marines. For nearly every chapter, the way that their vehicles are painted is you just take the dominant armor color of the chapter and you paint the whole tank that color. This strategy of radical simplicity can work for basically any faction. The Imperial Guard does it too sometimes, as you can see with this Chimera. Many real-world armored vehicles are painted this way as well. So it's great if you want to show big, bold colors like for the Space Marines, or if you want to go for a more realistic, modern military look. Let's move on to the second category, decorative color schemes. Far and away, the most common faction to use decorative color schemes are going to be the Eldar. Here I have pictured an official uh, Harlequin vehicle painted by the heavy metal team at GW. But if you go online and search for Eldar vehicles, you'll find that some people go really crazy with the decorative paint jobs on them. Even the most simplistic uh, Eldar paint jobs tends to have some kind of decorative element to them. You can see on this Falcon, even though it's mostly just red, it does have those stripes running through it. I think for decorative paint schemes, the difficulty level is going to be up to you in terms of how far you want to take it. You can make it as simple as doing a mostly monotone scheme with a handful of extra colors thrown in. Maybe you have a Space Marine chapter that has a secondary color on their pauldrons that you want to also insert somewhere on the tank. Or you can go all the way up to taking a Eldar Wave Serpent and painting a galaxy into it. Let's move on to the final broad category of color schemes, and that is camouflage. This is, of course, a favorite of the Imperial Guard. Camouflage paint schemes are ubiquitous on the box art for all kinds of Imperial Guard vehicles, with the simple two-tone camo stripe being an iconic choice. And camo is not just for guard. Uh, Tau use it very often as well. I think that going for a camo scheme is sort of in the middle in terms of difficulty. A two-tone camo stripe is fairly easy. You can go a little bit more complicated if you want, but it's usually never going to be as difficult as doing one of the truly astonishing paint jobs that some people do for their decorative schemes. Now that we've discussed all this, I'll show you what I chose to do. I went for a classic two-tone camo stripe. The easiest way that I could have went would have been just using the armor and the fatigue color as the two different stripe colors, but I actually ended up going for the sandy yellow of the Krieg overcoats and the kind of orangey brown of the new Cadian bedrolls and their gaiters. And I also found a way to translate the guardsman's dark green shoulder pad and insignia onto the 
vehicle as well by coloring the turret in that dark green and putting the dragon's head on the side of it. You can see that with the infantry standing next to the Chimera, they absolutely look like they belong together. In conclusion, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna choose which broad category of color scheme you want to do. You're gonna keep your color palette limited, relate all of the colors that you put on your vehicles to other elements of your army, and you'll have a great looking fleet of vehicles in no time. Thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you all on the tabletop.